everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today, I'm going to be doing a full face of Charlotte Tilbury. As many of you guys know, I love Charlotte Tilbury. It's one of my favorite brands. And I was just in the mood to do a full face of one brand. And I need to do these more. I wanna do more full face of one brand along with shopping my stash. I wanna do more of those videos. So I was just one of those moods to just pull out all my Charlotte Tilbury products and just do a full face. So that is what we're doing today. It's just kind of a chilled, laid back video going through all of my personal favorite products from Charlotte Tilbury. I will link everything I used in today's video down in the description box down below. And without further ado, let's go ahead and jump into the video. Okay, full face of Charlotte Tilbury. Let's get into this. I'm kind of excited because Charlotte Tilbury is one of my favorite brands and why not? Before we jump into the complexion products, I did put some self-tanner on my face. And in real life, it doesn't look this weird, but through the camera and through the monitor, it's looking a little weird. My face was getting so light. I needed some color to this face. And so I went ahead and put on a self-tanner. It's a little bit dark right here, but it is what it is. I am gonna use this. I haven't used this for a while. There's another product that I haven't used for a while, but recently pulled it out that I'm loving, but I haven't used this for a while. Uh, typically, I like to use the Magic Cream as kind of my base. So I'm gonna go in with this, and I do have some Hollywood Falls filter here. Uh, I have shade 5.5 tan, and I have shade 4.5, but I'm going to use this, because I haven't used this for a while. I just wanna see it, because it kind of gives, if I remember right, it kind of gives the Hollywood Flawless Filter vibe, but a little bit less. Like, it kind of gives a little bit of that, but it doesn't have as much highlight to it. Let's quickly talk about, like, foundation products, right? Number one, the actual airbrush foundation. I have to mix that one. Number one, the sh shades are a little bit strong, like the undertones. It's full coverage. It's a nice foundation, but I like to mix it with something because it can be a little bit too much and a little bit mask-like. So the best way for me to use it is to use the smallest amount and spread it as far as I can spread it or mixing it with something that it kind of feels like more of a tinted moisturizer, but that gives it some coverage, right? Because that foundation has so much coverage. Then we have the Beautiful Skin Foundation. That looks pretty when I first apply it, but it doesn't last very long. Within three, four, five hours, it literally lifts and pulls away from my skin. I have a friend that has really dry skin and she loves that foundation. So I definitely do think that the Beautiful Skin is probably best for those who do have a drier skin. Recently I was organizing and I came across this and I hadn't used it for a while. I put it on and I wore it all last week. So pretty much I didn't film all last week. I was getting ready for having company at my house and I had to go to shopping and grocery shopping and like getting everything prepared to have company. And this is the only thing I wore and I am in love with this. I am kind of mad at myself that I haven't been wearing this more than I have. Not only is it such a gorgeous tone, so even the Beautiful Skin Foundation kind of has some stronger tones. It's either like really yellow, I don't know, like the tones are a little bit strong, but this one is eight medium and it blends into my skin to the point where you can't even see it, even prior to me putting fake tan on my face but it blends into my natural skin tone and it doesn't have any strong undertones. It is so gorgeous. Now on the flip side of that, I love the Beautiful Skin Concealer, right? It's one of my absolute favorites. So I have shade eight and shade nine and I've been using shade nine, use this for coverage. This concealer is so creamy, it works beautifully as a spot conceal. So I take shade nine and I put a little bit here like this And I'm using just the smallest amount. That's just what was on the applicator all over the face. And then I just blend it in just to give me a little bit of coverage, just a light layer of coverage, right, is what I'm looking for. This will really help because when I go in with the Light Wonder, I will use the Light Wonder to 
kind of even out the entire skin. But this gives me the coverage that the Light Wonder doesn't have. And I have hyperpigmentation right at the hairline. So I like to kind of like bump this up into the hairline. And I like to use my foundation brush to blend it out because I feel like it spreads and doesn't leave it in one area. I give the Light Wonder a shake and I place about this much, but look at the undertones on this. This is like a perfect undertone. It's not too strong. It's not too yellow. It's not too beige. It's not too green. It's not too gray. Like this is a good undertone. If I am a shade reference for you, shade eight medium is gorgeous. So I just dip my brush into the back of my hand like this and I just go directly over top, but it is such a gorgeous combination with these two. Like I am kind of obsessed. I think this is my new favorite tinted moisturizer, truly. And I have a lot of good tinted moisturizers and a lot of good tinted moisturizers that I've that I've discovered for the year of 2022. I don't know why I haven't been using it, but I love this. I would say this is a light coverage. That's the reason why I am using a concealer to kind of give me the coverage because this doesn't give you a lot of coverage, but boy, is it so natural and so gorgeous. It's the undertone, it's the formula, it's the glow but it sets down. Now I will say that this isn't like super long lasting. It, I get probably a good six to eight hour wear it is probably accurate. Here's the thing, because this is so close to my skin tone, as it starts to wear down, you can't really tell. There's a lot of them that if they're a little bit too dark or a little bit too light, as it starts to wear down, you can really start to see it. Um, because this one is so close to my natural complexion that you can't really see where it starts to fade. So let's move on to brows. So I do have the Legendary Brows, which I do like this product. And I use this product the most is when I was trying to grow out my brows. I mean, I'm still trying to grow them out, but I used to have really, really thin brows. I mean, barely nothing. And this made my brows look a little fuller. Uh, and I don't mind using this on my brows, but I will use it in just a few areas and then I'll use a pencil in other areas. So my trick with this is to wipe off the little micro spoolie. Wiping it off is key. So I will just go in and add just a little bit like right through here, just to give a little bit of fullness and it kind of attaches to the hairs. And I think that's what I like the most about that product is the way that it attaches to the small little tiny hairs that you don't really know that you have. It gives you that fuller look. So see how it kind of filled that in? So I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side and then I like to use a pencil in the center. and then I'll use a pencil to fill it in. Now my favorite pencil is this one and I've been using this ever since she launched it. This is the Brow Cheat. It's pretty much the only one I use now, to be honest with you. I don't pick up any other brow pencil. I not only love that it lasts all day, but I like how I don't have to press too hard, right? So I can make little tiny strokes because I don't have to press super hard. I like that it's small and it doesn't break off. I have some that are so small and they work good, but they break off easy. This one doesn't break off easy, and I just love it. Absolutely love it. I have this one in medium brown, and the Legendary Brows, it is in soft brown. So I'm just gonna go in and just go over top of what I've done over here. Okay, let's move on to eyes. So I recently bought, if you guys have been with me for a while, you know that I love the Eyes to Mesmerize from Charlotte Tilbury. It's one of my favorite, absolute favorite cream eyeshadows. And I noticed that she launched the Exaggerize, so I grabbed it and oh, it is just so pretty. And I love these because they're simple and they're not super shimmery. Like you can wear them alone just to add something to the eye. 
you can use them as a base to put something over top. Like there's a lot of versatility. All of the matte ones, they are straight up garbage. And I don't even wanna go down that road because they're just bad. So one of my absolute favorite quads in my collection from Charlotte Tilbury, well, one of them is the Fire Rose, which is not available. Wah, wah, wah. She needs to bring that back. But I love the Exaggerize. It's one of my absolute favorites. And you can see that I've almost hit pan on the shade. And I also really love this one which is the Super Nudes Easy Eye. These are more of a creamier texture, more of a, you know, cream shadow. And I like to kind of pair these together. So that's what we're gonna do. I think I'm gonna first start with the Eyes to Mesmerize. And I'm just gonna put it on the lid and kind of blend it into the crease. And I like to use a flat brush for this. Anything that's kind of flat, but, you, but also you can use the tip to blend. So I'm actually gonna use the Worker Pro from Sonia G. I like to grab it like this and then just apply it and blend it as I'm applying it. I like to kind of blend it up and into the crease. There's so much versatility in this formula. Like see how much color that has? Like you could literally take a brush and buff out these edges and that could be your eyeshadow. You won't even need to go into a matte shadow. They're just so simple to apply and so easy to wear. Okay, now I'm gonna go into the Exaggerize palette and I'm gonna use the Sigma Shader Crease Brush. This is the E47. And I'm gonna use this smaller brush. Even though it's smaller, it still has a little bit up here at the tip where you can blend, but I'm gonna kind of map out my crease with this. So I'm just gonna kind of carve out the crease with this. This is a really good crease-like shader brush. If you have hooded eyes especially, this kind of brush will work wonders for you because it allows you to have control over creating that line, but you can also blend it with the tip of it because it's so thin. It's a rare brush. I don't have any other brush like this in my collection and it's a fantastic brush. And notice as I'm putting that matte shade over top of the eyes to mesmerize, look at that gorgeous shine in the crease. Isn't that so pretty? I'm also gonna bring that like right here along the lash line and kind of connecting it. And I'm gonna grab a small pencil brush and I'm gonna go into this shade in the Easy Eye palette. Slowly kind of add shadow here on this outer V. I'm also going to take a tiny bit of this color on the tip of this brush and go along the crease, like right here. See how it just tucks in there? Oh, it's such a good brush. Keeping it Charlotte Tilbury, I'm gonna take a brown eyeliner. This one is in the shade Barbella Brown. And I'm gonna go right at the base of my lashes just to add some depth. And I have Lashify on, by the way, so that's why my lashes look <laughs> already done, because I have Lashify on. I'm gonna dip my brush, like a wispy brush, into this shade and just sweep it over top of that crease. And I'm gonna go into this shade. This is one of my favorite shades, because it's kind of a powdery, um, brightening shade. So it's not super shimmery, but it's powdery and it really, really brightens the inner corner. It's one of my favorites. In fact, I will grab this palette just for this shade. And I'm gonna bring it right there. See how it just really pops? It's so powdery and it's so pigmented. Oh, it's just a good 
good shade. Now I'm gonna take my Smith 253 brush and I'm gonna go into this shade. Now this shade has gotten hard panned on me over the years. I've had this for a while and so I kind of have to scrape it with my fingernail because it has gotten hard panned. So I've got it here on the brush and I'm gonna bring it right here on. There goes a pencil. And this shade is beautiful because it kind of gives that wet look. Okay, so now I'm gonna kind of wipe, kind of clean up this outer corner, which I didn't get that much fallout. So I really don't need to clean up all that much. So now I'm gonna move on to the concealer and then move on to the lower lash line. So I use shade nine to kind of spot conceal. I'm gonna put shade eight underneath my eyes. And again, I like to wipe off the applicator. And then I like to use what's kind of down into the sponge to apply. This concealer is nice and hydrating, but it also kind of dries and sets down. And it's just such a simple, yet beautiful concealer to wear. I absolutely love that concealer. I think yeah. I'll just use a pencil brush to begin with. I'm gonna use that same one I've been using and go right at the base of the lashes. Now I'm gonna take that uh, Sigma brush and go into this shade. And I'm just gonna kind of blend that shade out a little bit. Let's move on to mascara. So I'm gonna pull out the Pillow Talk Push Up Mascara. Not my favorite, but works in a pinch. And I like to add just a little bit here on the tips of my Lashify. Like I don't put it all the way through, but see how it gives the Lashify just a little bit more definition. So the first thing I wanna do is I wanna pull out one of my favorite contours, which is this. So this is the Hollywood Contour Wand. I have it in the shade Medium Deep and this works so good. So I'm gonna take a little bit like this and then maybe a little bit here. Mm, maybe right here. And then I'm just gonna blend it out. I like to keep my foundation brush handy so I can kind of tap out the edges. And I'm using this BK Beauty 109 brush, and I've been really enjoying this brush to blend out contour or cream bronzer or whatever. It has a good angle on it, and it's kind of perfect for that. And then I wanna use one of the Lightgasm wands. So I have a lot of them here. So I have the Pillow Top 2 Medium, which is a little darker. So you can go directly on the skin like this. and blend out. I like to use these kind of as a base because they have that shine to them. One of my absolute favorite blushes from Charlotte Tilbury is Ecstasy. I love this blush. This is the uh, Cheek to Chic, such a gorgeous blush. I like to apply a powder blush over top of these. Now you don't have to. I just, you know, I love blush, so I'm always going to double up. And I know it looks like a lot, but once I powder, it'll kind of calm down a little bit. <laughs> oh, I love blush. Oh my gosh. My, I'm going to use her magic powder. It's not my favorite. I still love my hourglass, but I'll use it for the video. So I just kind of dip my brush down into the whole lid of it. I'm gonna try this. I didn't really notice that much of a difference with this, but so many people love it. I still prefer the original. It's just my favorite. I love the original powder. I 
Okay, I'm gonna grab the Filmstar Bronze and Glow only because I love her powder bronzer, the airbrush powder bronzer, but I think that would be kind of predictable for me to use that, so I'm gonna use this. In fact, I'm gonna use her bronzer brush. I love the bronzer brush with that airbrush bronzer. I normally don't like in fact, I never like retractable brushes, but this is such a good brush with that bronzer. So I'm gonna use this sculpt just a little bit and kind of pull this together. So I am gonna add just a little bit of this right like over top of the cheek, just a little bit. Okay, so now I'm gonna spray with some setting spray. I'm using the Airbrush Flawless setting spray. Oh, fetch. It just like, don't you hate it when that happens? It like sprays like a big clump right on your face. Okay. Let's move on to lips. And I've been going through my Charlotte Tilbury. Of course, I'm gonna use the Iconic Nude because this lip liner not only goes with everything, but it goes perfectly with the Exaggerized palette. So I'm gonna go ahead and line my lips. I have two colors and I couldn't decide between the two of them. So I have JK Magic, which is one of my favorites. That is JK Magic. It might be a little bit too pink for this. I'm not sure. But I also have this one, which is a really gorgeous nude. This one is Cover Star. That one. And it's cool toned. I don't know. I, I was gonna try it, see what it does. So I'm gonna put on Cover Star. And then like blend it into the lip liner. It's like a full nude though. And I like a little bit of color, so I'm gonna go over top of it with JK Magic. JK Magic is such a pretty color. Okay, so this is the final look. Full face of Charlotte Tilbury, and boy, do I feel like I am glowing. <laughs> Every part of my face is just glowing. Love the way the eyeshadow look turned out. Exaggerized palette is a staple in my collection. I love it. And also having the eyes to mesmerize to go with it in the Exaggerized is just perfection. And I love the face combination. Might have went a little bit heavy-handed with the bronzer, but... It is what it is, I don't mind. But I love the way that this lipstick kind of matches and goes with the eye look. Just so, so pretty. So that's it, you guys. That is the full face of Charlotte Tilbury. And like I mentioned in the intro, I would like to incorporate more full face of one brand into my videos and my scheduling and stuff. So shout out down below and let me know what brand you guys wanna see next. I love these videos, they're so fun. So that's it for this video, sound off down below. Thank you guys so much for hanging out with me in today's video. I hope you guys all have a wonderful day and I will see you guys all in my next video. Love you, bye.